Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega. Thank you, Lord. We honor you as Lord and Savior. You are such a great God. Amazing, amazing love. We, we love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit and your love. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. So welcome everybody. Thank you for being me, being with me and joining us here at True North Ministry, Pretoria. And may the word of the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Now, um, this morning I will speak on a very important, maybe the most important um, theme or subject. Uh, that we need to know and um, I think um, we need all to hear this and um, may the word bless you this morning and may the word of the Lord Jesus Christ be alive when I speak it and read the word may it be full of energy and power and fire and bring life to you because this is a type of teaching that is not only good for the soul. You need it actually in your spirit. And um, you need the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ to do something in you. So as I'm going to minister it, um, may it be a prayer in your heart. And it's also a prayer in my life that the Lord Jesus Christ will do something in me because I want more of him. Um, sometimes we have, as preachers, we will ask the Lord and we will preach and we will talk about, Lord, I want more of your anointing. I want more of your anointing. But when you go and see the, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and New Testament, you will never hear any disciple or people talk that way. They understood. This is Jesus Christ is within me. And the anointing is within me. But the situation that they and we have today that differs is actually ourselves. And the problem is this one thing. And it is yielding to the Lord. So if you are a man that wants more anointing or want more of the Lord inside of you, the key is actually yielding. They were yielded to the Lord Jesus Christ fully. Now, I believe that the man is complex. I believe there's rooms in man. A man has a spirit, soul, and body. And I believe sometimes we give only a part to the Lord Jesus Christ, but we need to give everything to the Lord Jesus. And that word yielding, I want to explain that to you. But um, it must not be a, a soulish message. This must be a spiritual thing that must happen to us. As I'm going to teach to you, maybe I'm going to say to you that um, you have never thought on. And I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me and um, he wants us to know this. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew 15 verse 12. I'm going to say to you things that you have never knew about yielding. The yielding. How important, the most important maybe message that we can speak on. Matthew 15 verse 12. Let's get my chalk here. So it says, Then the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Do you know what the Pharisees were offended? Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. All right. The Pharisees are offended. And then Jesus would say, Every plant 
that my Father, my Heavenly Father, has not planted. So there is plants that my Heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. So this plants is people because the Pharisees were offended by the saying of Jesus. And Jesus says, listen, my Heavenly Father has planted plants, but not all plants came from him. Think on this. That's why they were offended. All right. And they will be pulled up by the roots. Jesus is saying, now Genesis 1 verse 29. Want to read that as well? Because here is a great key that I want to give to you that maybe you do not know about this word yielding. And the Hebrew word, I'm going to write it yet, is Zara. But you would say Zora. All right, Zora. Zora. Hebrew word, Genesis 1 verse 29. All right. Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up, pulled up by the roots. Genesis 1 verse 21. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that was fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. I'm going to read um, another translation to you. It says, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. All right, you've got it. All right, so Genesis 1 verse 29, I've read that to you and I said to you that the Hebrew word is Zara. So it's important to know this. All right, what does it mean? And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. All right, so yeah, I'm going to write it, bearing. Do you know that this word bearing in Hebrew, Zara or zo, Zora, bearing, listen, is also Yielding. This is a great revelation. A great revelation. The same word in Hebrew that means bearing is yielding. So every time when we read about yield, to yield, to give up, that's what yield means. To give up means bearing. So don't forget now, this is a great key that I will give to you. All right. So God says, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed or every yielding, every herb yielding seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Now what does that mean? For you it shall be meat. Other words, you need to eat that. Other words, you, will, you must take part of it. Other words, you must become one with it. Do you hear what I'm saying? You must become one with it. Every seed Every tree yielding seed the Lord has planted. But Matthew 15 says, not all plants, speaking of men, is from the Father. What is the difference? Matthew 15 says, not all the plants that my Father has planted and they will be rooted up. 
Genesis 21 verse 29 says, And God says, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, yielding seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. It, to you it shall be your meat. So the tree that has seed, that yield seed, is from the Father. So in one sense, when we read Genesis 1 verse 29, it is, we will think naturally, all right, there's trees that yield fruit. And there's trees that yield seed. Do you know what is the first and the last stage of a tree? Seed. So when men speak of trees, they will focus on fruit. You must bear some fruit. You must bear some fruit. You must bear some fruit. But there's a later stage than fruit. And that's that seed. Yes, it's the first stage and the last stage. But the Lord is saying, I do not speak to you as natural now. Yes, the Lord has given us trees to eat. But the spiritual thing here is, I want, to, I want you to know that you are trees. And not every tree that the Lord has planted. There's trees that the Lord does, did not plant. But the trees that the Lord plants will yield seed. Or another word for yield bearing seed. So it's the first stage and the last stage. So the Lord wants something inside of you Something that yield seed. So we can be natural and stay natural and say, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the trees. But in Matthew 15, the Lord will say, Oh, not every plant, speaking of men. So we can go to Genesis and say, Oh, right. So there is trees that is not yielding seed. Because not all plants, or not all men, comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are then a man of Him, you need to yield seed. Because seed is the last stage of a tree, because it has to do with reproduction again. The Lord doesn't want you to bear some fruit. Yes, because the seed is in the fruit. But the Lord wants you to bear some seed. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. With that in mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Isaiah 66 verse 2. So that word is a Hebrew word. And it speak, it's yielding. So yielding brings seed. All right. And yielding is also bearing. So when we hear the word yield, we think it as negative. I want you to yield. Oh boy. I, I want you to yield to the Lord. It sounds, oh, this is not going to be lacquer. Because you're going to yield. You hear? This is how we think. English wise. You need to yield to the Lord. We think, oh, okay, I'm going to yield to the Lord. But in Hebrew way, you are happy because you are going to bear bearing. And what are you going to bear? Oh, seed. So see, fruit is for you to eat, but seed is something more. It is for you to eat and also it reproduce. So that's why yielding is actually a thing that we are saying, I'm happy. I, I want to yield before the Lord. Very good. <laughs> and the, yeah, all right. So Isaiah 66 verse 2. 
the Lord called me to, to explain to people and his church things of the word of God and to show them how things are working. And this is very important that I'm going to say to you now. Isaiah 60 verse, verse 2. Has not my hand made all these things? Remember the Lord asked this. And so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem. The Lord looks unto this, esteem. This is the one I esteem. He who is humble and a contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. The Lord looks unto the one who is at humble and a contrite spirit. What is a contrite spirit? The Hebrew word means lame or poor. Alright, so I thought about it. Lord, why is that a good thing to have a poor spirit or a lame spirit? Because I'm going to look at someone that has a poor or lame spirit. That word means it's a needy spirit. Alright, a needy spirit. So someone that is poor is lacking. And someone that lacks is needy. So the first thing that I want you to know about yielding is a contrite spirit is a needy. It needs the Lord. I'm going to look at a needy spirit. This one I esteem, says the Lord. He who is humble and is needy and trembles at my word. Alright, so the first key for yielding is you need to be needy. The Lord wants you to be needy. Poor in spirit, lame in spirit, lack in spirit, and that spirit is a contrite spirit, that means he's needy. I'm going to esteem this man. I'm going to look after this man, the one who is needy. I want it. So the Lord says with this scripture, I want you to want it. Yield. You need to yield to the Lord. How I, how I, how are you going to yield to the Lord? You need to be needy and look, trembles at my word. Philippians 2 verse 5. The second key. The second key. Just let me get this obedient. Obedient to death. Second key, Philippians 2 verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Philippians 2 verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. Verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he, Jesus Christ, humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death of the cross. All right, so yielding has to do with something. It means you need to obedient, okay. obey. But it has levels. And the last level of obedience is unto death. It starts of your, you, your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. What attitude did he have? 
verse 8. He being felt in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. So if I say to you, you need to you to you. You need to you you to the Lord. Yielding is obedience. You are buying. But you can obey the Lord in levels. You can choose when you want to obey. But true yielding means it is obedience unto death. Obedience unto death. That's the second key. Verse 9 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. God exalted him to the highest place because he yielded him. He was obedient unto death. That's the second key for yielding to the Lord. Alright, let's come back and understand. Yielding is not bad, it is good, it's bearing. It bears something and it bears seed. First of all, you need to be needy. God would look after that guy. Second of all, obedience unto death. All right, therefore God exalt him to the highest place. Colossians 3 verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Whatever you do, work it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men. There's the third key. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord, as a reward. It, it, is, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong and there is no favoritism. So, the third key is you do it for the Lord. You must tell yourself that everything that you do, you do actually for the Lord. I, I try to help me now how to heal. All right. Do you hear what I'm saying? You must, ne do not think no negative. You must think positive. To bear, bearing seed. I am helping men to yield. How can I help you to, he to yield yourself to the Lord? You must be happy because I am saying, I'm going to help you bear some seed. First of all, you need to be needy. The Lord wants you to need to be. A poor spirit is a needy spirit. I need you. I need you. Contrite. You need to know I will be obedient to the death because yielding has levels and the last level is death. And it doesn't help you to yield a little. Because then you bear a little. It is unto 
death. The third point, it is for the Lord. Everything you do is for the Lord. So actually, when you actually wash, um, washing your clothes of your family, or you are in the kitchen, busy cleaning stuff, what are you doing? You say to yourself, I'm yielding myself to the Lord. I do it for the Lord. In what form? I'm obedient unto death. I am needy. I need you, Lord Jesus. That will help you to bear some seed. As a working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid as well for his wrong. And there is no favoritism. So, doesn't matter who you are. If you do good, God will reward you. Because you know you work for Him. You are here today, not for my sake. You are here for your sake. And for the Lord's sake. Because you are doing it for Him. And what does it help you? You do things for Him and it's not unto death. You choose then. I will yield myself. Then you choose then. My bearing is also only limited. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 22 and 23. For he was a slave when he was called by the Lord. He was a slave who was called by the Lord. Is the Lord's freeman. You are a slave, the Lord called you, now you are his man. You are his freeman. Similarly, he was a free man when he was called his Christ slave. So it doesn't matter, you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a slave, you is his freeman. The Lord makes you free, but you belong to him. And if you are a freeman, you are his slave. You must tell yourself, I am the Lord's slave. I am the Lord's slave. Everything I do is for the Lord. That's why I want to heal myself. And I'm going to heal myself unto death. I'm going to be needy. Because I want to bear some seed. Not all trees is from the Lord. He will root some trees up. But the trees that are from the Lord is the fruit yielding, seed yielding trees. Bearing seed. Verse 23 says, you were bought with a price. Do not become slaves for men. Alright. Now do you know what's the difference between a slave and a servant? A slave is in bondage, but it's not by own will. A servant is in bondage, but it's by own will. Alright. So I am a servant of the Lord. It's by my own will that I want to serve the Lord. A slave is in bondage, not by own will. The guy comes and buy you. You cannot, you have no choice in the matter. You work the same as a servant, but you are in slavery. You have no choice. The one has a choice. And that's why you were bought with a price. You do not become slaves of men, but it's slaves of men, not servants of men. You need to be a servant of men, but you do not be a slave of men. So know this, 
It's very important what I'm saying now. Yeah. You must not be a slave of any man, but you need to be a servant of man. Yeah. Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Be a servant like he was, but not a slave unto men. All right? Yielding to Galatians 5 verse 1. In the Greek, if I'm speaking to you and I say to you, you need to yield to the Lord. It's two things. It is live. Um, I'm going to put number seven, maybe this side. All right. I'm going to put seven this side. Is live and let. By the Spirit. Nobody ever uh, really speaks on you need to yield. You do not hear a lot of it. You need to yield yourself to the Lord. But what does it mean? It means to live through Him and be led by Him. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, it is freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So don't become a slave, but be a servant. And uh, I say, don't be burdened again. So you can be a son of God and be burdened again by being a slave. Go back. So in verse 16 says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Live by the Spirit. Yeah, it is. Live by the Spirit. If you live by the Spirit, it is the same as yielding to the Lord. Live by the Spirit. And the Spirit, what is contrary for the sinful Mm, where was it now? So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of sinful nature. Verse 17, for sinful nature desire what is contrary to the Spirit. It means it stands against. It's contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. There's a sinful nature and the spirit that are in contrary with each other. And the one keeps you for doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. But if you are led by the spirit, what is lived by the spirit and led by the spirit? It is yielding. To the Spirit. So when someone says we need to yield ourselves. Lord I'm going to yield myself. It sounds not lacquer and bad. It sounds not good. But it is actually good. Because you are saying I'm going to bear now something. And I'm going to live by the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. Amen. For the sinful nature desire what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what's contrary to sinful nature. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. All right, now, here is now the key. The last key. How? Do you yield? How do you yield? You must say, yes, I want to yield myself. Why? Because it means bear. What? Seed. God wants you to bear some seed. He wants you to eat from that tree. 
He wants you to partake of that tree. He wants you to become one with that tree. What tree? The tree that is bearing or yielding seed. Not all trees comes from the Lord. He will root them up. But who is staying? The bearing or the yielding trees. The yielding people. That's why I say to you, this is so important word that I say to you this morning. The yielding people, he will live. Yielding. But yielding is not, ooh, cry, it is happy. Because you are going to bear. But what are you going to bear? Are you going to bear seed? That's good. But how? First of all, you need to be needy. Spirit, I need you, Lord. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. You must know you must need the Lord. And then you will say, I will be obedient unto death. I will be obedient to the lowest form. Because yielding is levels. But I'm going to be yield myself. I want to bear. And I'm going to yield myself to the lowest form. It is unto death. Because everything I do is for his sake. It's not for my wife's sake. Even I will do it for her. Or she is doing it for me. Or my kids is a zia going fetch me some water you do it actually for the Lord and you will do anything for the Lord amen, amen. Yeah. are you in that place of yielding you will do anything for the Lord listen are you in that place where you will do anything for the Lord that's a question that means are you in that place where you are healed? Yielding yourself unto death. That's another word or sentence. Yo, think on that. Gee. That's why I say there's a difference between the disciples of the old and we. Us. The people the disciples that walk with Jesus, they yielded themselves to the Lord unto death because they did die for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a big difference between the church today and that's, that's why we must focus on this yielding because this yielding means bearing. You want more of God, you want more of His Spirit, you want more anointing, what's the key? Yielding. Nothing Nothing else, you must yield. And it means needy. You need it. And it is obedience unto death. And it is, you do it for the Lord. Everything. There is a reward from the Lord, you do it for Him. You are actually a slave for Christ. But how? And this is a shocker now. It's impossible to yield your spirit. If you do not know what I'm going to read to you now. Romans 12 verse 1. It's impossible to yield your spirit if you do not yield your body. It's the eight, number eight, your body is the key. You can only yield your spirit if you yield your body. The door to your spirit of yielding to the Lord is through your body. Listen, there's many people that will say, I will yield myself to the Lord. How does it come? You need to yield your body. That's the door to yielding to the Spirit and to death. And Romans 12 verse 1 says, I urge you brothers, therefore, I urge you. Urge means 
Uh, I urge you, man, I beg of you now. Lorne, I beg of you. In the view of God's mercies. So that means, put God's mercies here and look unto it. Mercies means, you deserve things and it's bad things, but it's not going to give it to you. So in the view of God's mercies, in the face of God's mercies, thank you God. He's not going to give you now what you, you, you actually deserve. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> He's going to give you something else. In the view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to, the, to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Oh man, that guy only act if he knows the law. He's only acting. How do you know he's acting? Because you look into his physical body. Oh, he's acting. But you know, that is the first key. The acting of the body for yielding in the spirit. Nobody ever told me this, what I'm telling you this morning. We heard so many times of people that say, we must yield to the Lord. But how do you yield to the Lord? First door, to yield to the Lord, you need to know, you need to give your body as a living sacrifice. Now, it's not the offering. Because, Quibbus, there's two things. You get the offering, that means I will come and I will offer it unto you. <laughs> I offer it. Sacrifice is, ooh, it's a sacrifice. Oh, to do this is a sacrifice. Do you hear the difference? So, give your body as a living sacrifice. It's going to cost yourself your body because that will be an acting that will be your spiritual act of worship. It will be the first act of your worship. Do you want to yield yourself? You need to give up your body. Your body does not belong to the Lord. Oh, to yourself. It belongs to the Lord. And everything you are doing is for the Lord. And it is unto obedience, unto death. You are a slave to the Lord. Daniel 3 verse 28. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? I, I will, uh, what I try to do is to mention it over and over again so that we can understand that it's all coming together and you get the concept. Or what it truly means. Because you want to bear some seed. You want to bear. The Lord has given some men. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not a tree that will be rooted up. I am a tree planted by God. And that means I must bear some seed. That's in fruit. Fruit bearing seed. We have read that. Daniel 3 verse 28 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake, and he said, Blessed be the God of Zachariah, Zadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember when they were thrown in the furnace? The three guys, the three friends of Daniel. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake, and he said, Blessed be the God of Zad Zadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who have sent this angel and delivered these servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own God. 
Do you want angels to come and minister to you? Do you want angels to move with you? Do you want the presence of angels in furnace? Is they and they yield their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Yielded their bodies. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. That means you are going to come to a place where you need to understand, Lord, I want to yield myself to you. The way how I'm going to yield myself to you is by yielding my body. My body unto your service. I want to bear some seed and fruit. Because I belongs to you. There is people that are going to be offended, but the Lord will pluck them out because not all trees belongs to the Lord. But who is the trees, you, that belongs to the Lord? Oh, thou, those who bear some seed, who yield seed, who are yielding. Lord, I'm going to yield my body as a living sacrifice to you because everything that I do is actually for you, not for anyone else. I'm going to yield my body and my spirit. I'm going to yield my body and spirit unto death because I know there's levels. But yielding is, is obedient to death. I'm going to be needy, Lord Jesus. For I'm a slave for you. It's going to cost me because I'm going to be a sacrifice for you. And then I'm going to see the Lord with me. Because the Lord esteem. The Lord looks after the people that are actually yielded unto him. You don't need anything else. You don't need anything more from the Lord. You only need to yield and it will go through your body to your soul, to your spirit. Let's yield to the Lord. I hope, I hope this has blessed you. I hope you understand. Maybe you have heard something that you have never heard before about yielding, but yielding is so important. Because that means actually bearing, really. Seed. Reproduction. Seed is always good. It's the beginning and the end. It's good. May the Lord Jesus bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.